Good morning, everybody. Happy hump day. <laughs> it's Wednesday. Um, I'm happy about it. it. means we're one step closer to Friday, which is my day off. <laughs> um, so I have breakfast already made. I'm not cooking for any of you guys. I have scrambled eggs, a slice of toast with some honey, and my strawberries. I have, these strawberries have gone a long way. Um, I have four left just enough for tomorrow for breakfast so that's good um and then i have to go buy more strawberries and some like other essentials um on friday so friday is going to be a grocery shopping slash cat food shopping day my cat food um my cat food my cat's cat food which starla here's starla oh so there's luna luna's right there in the cat tree she's looking out the window and Starla is around here. Starla! Here, Starla! Mm -hmm. She's wandering around. You guys will probably see her. Starla shows up in, the, in my videos a lot more, but today it's cute. Luna's right there. She likes to look out the window. Um, oh, where's my fork? <laughs> mm. Ooh. That was a bitter bitter berry right there um so i took my nail polish off because i'm gonna repaint my nails and i'm also gonna put some clear coat on top of my nails i saw your comment one of you um is a nail person so you said the clear coat will help with the chipping so i'm gonna do that um hmm. what else what else what else Mm. I posted it on Instagram. I think I have like 18 library books checked out. I'm not even kidding you, you guys. Maybe, well, actually like four of them are mine, are not mine. They're for my husband's and nephews. So I have about maybe like 15, 13, 14 um, that are mine. <laughs> and I posted it on my Instagram where I'm that girl that checks out multiple books from the library and I still feel like I don't have anything to read. Story of my life, it's like I'll see something that interests me, I'll check it out because I, I wanna just have it and then I won't read it. And so I'm like, and sometimes I do read the books but sometimes I don't. So there's a lot of times where I'll check out library books, I don't read them and then I return them. But because I work in a library, I don't accrue late finds so I can hold a book whenever, however long I want. I try not to do it too long because especially if they're new books, which I tend to love to read new books um, because I know other people want to read them. So I'll turn them in like today. I'm going to bring back a couple that I know I'm not going to read, um, but it's fall season. So I really want to read something scary. And I have two books that I, I have a young adult book that I want to give a shot to. But I did that whole thing where I looked it up on Goodreads and Goodreads gave it like not so good reviews. So I need to stop doing that because I have found that just because certain people say that a book isn't good doesn't mean that it's not good. Um, everybody has a different opinion on stuff and sometimes I read things that I think is amazing and everyone else thinks it sucks. So <laughs> it just depends. Um, but um, I definitely want to give that young adult book a shot even though it was like, it had mixed reviews on, on Goodreads. Um, but Black Cats and Cards, or AKA Jess, she posted on her Instagram a pile of books that she checked out, um, one of them being The Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. And I was like, oh my God, I should give that a shot. Now, I'm a little skeptical with Stephen King because I don't know if he's my author. <laughs> because last fall, I think this was last fall, or no, maybe this was the fall before that. No, this was last fall, because I was still working at the same library. Um, the two horror books that I read in October were, or for fall, so October through November, were um, Stephen King's Salem's Lot and um, The Exorcist. The Exorcist, really good. It's just like the movie. 
similar like like the movie it's an easy easy read it's not complicated it's not like i hate a book that's super complicated where we're like i know this doesn't sound horrible where like i have to really think to like figure it out i don't want to have to do that i like to escape when i read my books and so if it's a simple read and i'm like it's just it's a relaxing time for me i really like simple reads like that so exorcist was definitely one of them so if you guys are looking for something spooky to read exorcist is it um which is why I'm, I'm trying to read rosemary's baby which i started it but i'm like not focused enough for it so i'm gonna hold on to that one because i do still want to read it it seems like it would be pretty easy um but salem's lot really disappointed me and i had high hopes for it because one my mom she like hyped it up for me she was like oh yeah i was really spooky and i was i was like scared when i read it and i'm like okay and then um it's Stephen King so you figure oh he's like the king of horror books not really but you know you know what I mean stereotypes and I didn't like it I thought Salem's Lot was dragged on I thought you could have like told the whole story in 100 pages not 600 and whatever it was um I felt like it was like just you're jumping from one character to the next and there's so many characters and that's one thing I don't like about Stephen King books is that there's so many freaking characters I can't keep track I just can't I try to put like faces to each character of like people that I'm familiar with. So like I try to put like my friends faces on the characters if there's like a lot of characters like that. Um, just to help me remember. And <laughs> it didn't work. There's just too many, too many characters in Stephen King books. Now, I don't know if all of his books are like that, but um, I don't know. And then, but I will say this. Stephen King's is Carrie. That one's a good one. It's a short book. It's probably one of his shortest ones that he has. It's a short book. It's really good. It follows the movie. It's spooky. I liked it. So if you do want to read something Stephen King, but you don't want to invest in like a 600 plus book, um, go with Carrie. It's really good. So Pet Cemetery is kind of like in, in between. It's not, it's not a big, big, big book. Um, so I think it might be doable. So I might give it a try. We'll see. Um, I've never seen the entire movie. I've seen bits and pieces, but I've never seen the movie in its entirety. I always seem to catch it like towards the ending, like the middle to the end. So <laughs> probably which is the most creepiest part. But um, but yeah, so I'm going to, I think I'm going to give it a shot. I think we have it at our library, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, what else? But yeah. I was just disappointed in Stephen King's Salem's Lot. I'm into vampires. I love creepy vampires, but it just didn't do it for me. Um, so yeah, I have a love-hate relationship with Stephen King. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what, what happens. I have a couple other horror books in my book bag. Or actually it's like a stack in my room <laughs> um to choose from to see what i want to do but i'm kind of like i'm torn i'm like i could read a young adult horror book but usually they're just so mild it's so vanilla i need something like scary and bloody and gory and spooky and creepy and so inappropriate like i need stuff like that so i think that's why i'm not digging young adult um the the young adult genre as much as i used to i loved it before it was like one of my favorite genres to read it still is but it's so vanilla and it's so like and obviously because it's for young adults so you have to realize that you have like you know 10 to 18 year olds young adult what is young adult like 13 to 18 technically um reading this content so it can't be super inappropriate and juicy but <laughs> some although some of it it is it's quite juicy um but i need something really inappropriate to read that will hold my attention especially when it comes to horror because i can't do like i can't do twilight vampire horror that's just not horror to me so ooh, i need something more <laughs> so we'll see what i find we'll see what i what i what i try to settle for but in the meantime I'm trying to finish um, the Three Days Missing book, the one that I showed you guys yesterday. 
It's really good. I love that author. I'm definitely going to invest in some of her other books because I think our library needs to have them. <laughs> but it's also just an excuse for me to buy it. Um, but I do really like enjoy her writing. So um, I want to finish that book because I want to know how it ends, obviously. Um, and then I'm going to start my spooky readings when, when I finish that book. So yeah. Um, anyways, you guys, I'm going to temporarily go so I can finish my food so I don't want to I don't want to be like eating on camera all the time um so I will be right back okay well actually I think I should just probably keep it on the table so you guys can see what I'm doing oh you, it, well, I guess it won't matter it won't really matter um my sister tried to FaceTime me right now and then when I tried to call her back her FaceTime didn't go through so I don't know I don't know if it was a mistake or what. She likes to FaceTime in the morning, though, but usually she calls my mom so that my mom can see the boys, her babies, her kids. Okay, so if the if, if this gets cut off randomly, then you guys will know why. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to paint my nails. Um, I'm going to do that same color that I was talking about, that charcoal gray. I really... Um, ew my hands my nails are like stained yellow it's so gross um but my nails are long you guys they're actually growing so i'm just so excited yeah so i just thought oh let me paint my nails repaint them because they were chipping and then i repainted it and then it chipped again because i mean i know that like when you when once your nail chips and you repaint it over it with nail polish it's literally a temporary fix because chances are it's gonna chip in the same spot. And that's what happened yesterday. So um, I'm gonna just try to do this the more correct way. And um, use clear coat on top. And I don't know how to paint nails, so. So there will be errors. <laughs> There will be errors, like I'm not the neatest person when I do this, but whatever. So you guys, um, 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 what's going on? <laughs> well, what's going on, you guys? Um, so Saturn is, today Saturn is direct. It was retrograde, I think as of all of, all of May through this, the rest of this, like for like five months, I think it could have been longer. I heard, I heard another astrologer say seven months. So maybe that's correct. I don't know. Um, but I just know, and I love this polish cause it dries fast. Um, I just know that Saturn was retrograde for at least seven months. So we'll just put it that way. Um, and it just went direct today. It's Saturn is in the sign of Capricorn and I believe it's 13 degrees Capricorn right now. Um, so if you are into astrology or you want to know how the Saturn direct will, like the energy will influence you in your life, look in your birth chart, look for Capricorn and find out what house Capricorn represents, um, for you and your birth chart. So for me, um, Capricorn is in my eighth house and the eighth house is all about transformation, death, rebirth, and sex. Um, I think it's also other things like the eighth house is like they say is one of the most complicated houses. So um, for me, I will say that um, um, for me, death and rebirth to me are awakenings. It is being able to say goodbye to a bad habit and to say hello to something new. It's like new journeys, like just basically like new cycles. Um, and then the whole thing with sex being in that house too, um, sexual energy and, and you know, your sex life. So to me with Saturn being retrograde for so long and it's fu kind of funny, like how it kind of goes with my life. So for the last seven months, my husband's been in the academy. So he's been up in Sacramento and he's been doing his thing and he doesn't come home except for like once a weekend, like one, one, two days technically. But if he's driving, 
you know, I only see him for like a day and a half. Um, so technically one day <laughs> um, on the weekends if they're allowed to leave. And sometimes he wasn't allowed to leave. But for the most part, I was seeing him four days a month. Um, and you can imagine that our sex life was kind of sad, right? <laughs> Um, but it wasn't even just the sex life. It was my, my nightlife, like my, my, my romance time with him. Um, but also me sleeping alone in bed and just like, there was just a lot of changes. And, um, it's kind of funny how Saturn was, was retrograde during this entire Academy experience. So if I want to say, you know, if I want to put it bluntly, like, yeah, Saturn retrograde affected my sex life just a little bit, you know, and um, the sex routine, our schedule was a little different. <laughs> and then also um, with the, the, the death and the rebirth, it was like his, his experience, you know, is changing, obviously. I was looking at his sign too, like his chart, but for the death and rebirth for me with that house, um, it was, you know, a lot of changes this year. So it was like moving into my house and it was, getting comfortable with a, um, an hour commute to work and getting comfortable with living alone because my husband wasn't home. And um, just a lot of like, I had to transform. I literally had to transform. My lifestyle changed, my marriage changed, my sex life changed, um, I changed. So there was a lot of transformation within me. So it makes sense um, that that Saturn influence makes sense for me. Um, and so I'm really excited because they say like when Saturn goes direct, whew, I've got to chill. <laughs> when Saturn goes direct, they say it's pretty much like you you get that burst of like freedom and that burst of like because Saturn puts a stop to things, and so when it's when it's when it's retrograde, you are looking inward and you are you know going through like a, a, a kind of like a pause. I look at it as a pause, like you're just not moving, you're stagnant. And then when it's going direct, it's kind of like a burst forward. Um, and so for me, it's kind of like, ooh, is my sex life going to get spicy again? <laughs> and then the other thing is, is that my husband's going to be concluding, um, concluding, is that is that a word? He's going to be finishing the academy um, in three weeks. So just under three weeks. So he will be done as of the first week, that first weekend of October. Um, so it's kind of like, perfect the way that we're seeing Saturn going direct and then in a couple days literally we're going to be jumping into a new sign so we're going to be going into Libra season and then um, within that same time frame we are literally seeing the season shift into fall so we're like saying goodbye summer and hello fall and goodbye Virgo season, hello Libra, and um, and then we're seeing the Saturn going direct, and then for me personally, in my personal life, I'm seeing my husband coming home, and you know, our marriage getting back to normal again, you know? So it's like, it's kind of cool how there's a lot of changes, there's a lot of, a lot of changes with that. And um, I'm, I don't know, I just thought that that was kind of so relevant, and I really like the way, the way astrology kind of creepy eerily fits our life <laughs> so that's why i urge you guys to to look at your birth charts um and see where saturn is influencing your chart right now because um and it's it's in the sign of capricorn so where's capricorn in your chart because you're gonna kind of see where those, you know, where 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 you're feeling that energy, where that where you're feeling Saturn's energy, and Saturn is, Saturn is, um, Pluto's more of a planet of transformation. Saturn's a more more of a planet of karma, a planet of lessons and and change. It's, it brings change, but it's like before you can move forward and collect two hundred dollars, you need to go through some bullshit first. Like that's what Saturn is. <laughs> And then also they say Saturn kind of puts a halt on things in life. So it's like it gives you a delay or it gives you, you really have to think things through kind of a thing. It's Saturn isn't always a nice planet, but sometimes, sometimes we need that. Like sometimes we need to be 
stopped in our tracks so that we could rethink or reevaluate what we're doing and then move forward. So, yeah. So, oh my God, they look so much better. They look so much better now that they're painted. Like, I can't, look at how awful. <laughs> um, but, but when you get it on your skin, it always peels off once it's really dry. So I'm not worried about that. Um, I just love the way fresh nails look. Like when you're, it's fresh, the polish is fresh and you just have like that. Oh, yeah, so that's that's my little tidbit today of, of astrology, you guys. Um, mm, oh, I had so some of you guys sent in some like ideas for what you want me to talk about. I'm gonna look up my. I took a photo of it so I didn't lose it. So let me hang on one second. Hi guys, I'm in the tarot room. Um, I haven't been in here in a while. It's been like a while since I've been in here, <laughs> like good a, a good week at least, because um, I took a break last weekend. I gave myself some time. I gave myself some time. Um, but I wanted to sit in here because it's been a while since I filmed a video in my room. Hi, Starla. Oh, it smells so good. Um, I have the itch to go to a crystal shop today. And I don't have to be at work till 2. So I usually leave the house if to be at work by 2. I usually leave the house by 1230. So I have an hour to drive. And then I have an extra half hour for like just in case traffic, you know? <laughs> um, but I kind of want to stop at, well, I definitely want to stop at Sprouts before I go to work because it's $5 Sushi Wednesday. Um, and so the little sushi man is going to be there making those sushi rolls. So I want to make sure I buy one of those rolls. Hopefully they'll have a Philly roll because those are really good and it's only five bucks. Um, so I want to pick up a sushi roll at Sprouts, but right next door to Sprouts is one of my favorite crystal shops. So I'm thinking of stopping there. Um, I want to go to another crystal shop, but it's further down on the next freeway. And um, I, I just can't see driving down there, going to the crystal shop and then having to drive back up just to get to Sprouts and then having to back, drive back all the way back down to go to work. So <laughs> it's not really it's not really in my way right now so I'm kind of like well I'll have to stop by that crystal shop another time or see what they have online because I know that they're starting to sell their products online and stuff and so <clears throat> I'm like no I'll just have to make another day for that for that shop <laughs> but today I think uh, since Sprouts and the crystal shop are like right in the same um, parking lot I think I'm just gonna skedaddle on over there and check out their stuff and see what they have and not go hog wild with buying a lot of stuff but maybe I'll pick up something I don't know we'll see I just have a craving to be in the crystal store so um when I get that feeling I'm like I, I just need to suffice myself and it's like I get that feeling a lot more often now because we don't have any crystal shops here up here where I live so it's kind of sad I love crystals though you guys like I like to work with them I like to use them in my, you know, everyday readings and stuff. Um, so yeah. Ah, I thought I like hit my nail. Okay, good. I didn't scuff it. Um, aliens, you guys. So <laughs> I follow quite a few of you who love aliens and who love to talk about the whole alien thing. And so it was funny because um, Katie from uh. Katie, I can't remember your username handle. You changed it recently and I can't remember what it is. But anyways, I'm sure she'll leave a comment in this video because she usually watches my videos. Um, so she was talking about a documentary or I think it was a documentary that you were watching on um, YouTube. I think it's on YouTube, you said, where people talk about their abductions and all of that. So I really want to watch it now because it looked really interesting. Um, and it's kind of funny, Katie, because after you were talking about all that and I was watching your stories, um, I logged off of, well, I didn't log off. I signed, well, okay, I didn't sign off Instagram, but I like closed the app on my phone, took a shower, and then I came back on Instagram. And the first thing that popped up was another alien post, not from you, but it was from someone else that I can't think of who it was. And then I jumped onto YouTube to see, um, to look at the comments that I've gotten on some of my videos. And the first recommended video was Gigi. I love Gigi. But Gigi had posted um, a video about the gray aliens, the grays. So 
<laughs> I was just like, that is so synchronistic. Like, how does that happen? Um, and so, and then right now I just found my little alien um, quartz crystal. So I thought that was kind of funny. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I have another one. I have a clear one. I think he's in, actually, I don't know. He's either up on my shelf. I think he's up on my shelf where my crystal skulls are, but I have a little alien crystal and I thought he's so cute. Um, and so, yeah, I definitely want to watch that documentary thing. Um, I like aliens. They used to creep me out for whatever reason. And then I had like my little experiences, my little, <clears throat> I guess you could call them UFO experiences, which there's a video all about that. Um, I'll link it in this, in the description box. Cause I think I have it. I don't know if I tagged it. I might've tagged it in one of my playlists, but I'll look for it for you guys. Um, and I'll link it when I have it. Um, but I did a video where I was talking about my UFO experiences and, um, and then one about my husband's experience, but he wasn't in the video or anything like that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I will link that so you guys could see it. But, um, I just thought that was kind of funny. I had a, I had a, extraterrestrial morning this morning <laughs> with all of those like alien synchronicities I, I had to mention it um but yeah um I don't know I don't know what to talk about you guys I feel like I'm just kind of mumbling and like not really talking about much um but I, I don't want this to be like an empty video so let's pull a card <laughs> This is the holographic tarot. I'm trying to be careful because I don't want to like mess up my nails. Oh, 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 <laughs> never mind. We got a card. So it's the nine of cups. Um, so the nine of cups is <sighs> to me, the nine of cups is telling me because I'm pulling this for myself is to, you know, be optimistic and to be literally emotionally content with where I'm at, what I'm doing, how things are today. Um, it also is kind of telling me that emotionally, you know, I've, everything's got it covered. I feel like this is spirit is saying that they have my back. Everyone's good. Everything's good today. Don't, you know, don't stress, no stress, that kind of thing. So I like that. I think the nine of cups coming up is that reminder. Um, but it's interesting too, because the nine of cups can also be if we're looking at it from a little bit more low vibe aspect, nine of cups can be playing face. It could be like you are pretending like everything is good and everything's okay when on the inside you're crumbling and falling apart. So that's not how I am today. I feel, I'm feeling really good to be honest. Like I feel like I'm emotionally connected. I feel like I just feel really happy. Um, but I do know that there are, whoo, there are times where I will feel like I'm playing face, like I'm just trying trying to make sure that people aren't aware of how I'm really feeling deep down inside. So I do a lot of that whole like covering up my emotions kind of thing. Oh my God, my cards are like flying everywhere. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. So the other card that I just pulled is the judgment card. To me, judgment is about that receiving that higher calling from spirit. Spirit is making connections, that kind of thing. But I also sometimes see judgment as, um, like when we're talking about the low vibe version of the card, I see judgment as paying attention to what other people are saying, paying attention too much. Like you're tuning too much into what other people are saying or thinking about you versus what's really like taking place. And um, it's kind of interesting that that popped up right now for me because that's actually something I was thinking about yesterday. Um, as we're creeping closer to my husband's graduation, um, I'm getting a little bit anxiety about that. So I'm getting anxiety over being in a room with a lot of people because sometimes I get really um, like claustrophobic kind of feeling or I just start to, I get nervous when I'm around a lot of people because there's a lot of energies and I'm telling you guys like I feel everybody's emotions all at the same time and so when I'm in a room full of a lot of people, um, it's a lot for me. Um, and so I'm nervous about that. I don't want to, I don't want that to ruin the experience. Um, but I'm also nervous about the judgment of others. And, um, I was texting with my husband's partner's wife. So I've been texting with her 
um, throughout this whole experience because she's going through the same thing I'm going through. Our husbands are gone and we're going through this whole experience together. So it's nice to have that support from somebody. And so I was texting with her the other day about my insecurities and I do have insecurities. Um, and I feel like this is also coming up with my, um, with whole, like with Saturn doing its thing, stuff's coming out. Um, so <laughs> I feel insecurities with my body and I, it's something that it's a constant battle with me. Um, it's something that let's pull a card on that. Let's pull a card on my, my physical insecurities. Um, I have always been conscious of my body since I was a little girl. And it's funny because I was also watching Hannah's elsewhere. She's a, an astrology that astrology is astro oh, an astrologer that I like. Oh my God. I'm like dropping my cards everywhere. Hang on you guys. Let me get that real fast. Hey, get that. No, 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 oh, The nine of wands. Um, so Hannah was talking about Chiron and so I was watching last night a video about Chiron and Chiron's influences. Chiron is the wounded healer and so I have Chiron in my first house um, of, is it Gemini, duh, Gemini rising. <laughs> And so um, I was watching Hannah's video where she was talking about being a Gemini rising, but also having Chiron in your first house of Gemini. And a lot of the stuff she was saying was so true that we have we deal with bo being body conscious and we deal with probably being made fun of or like being bullied at a young age and blah, 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 blah. And it's so true. I was like, I had to leave a comment on her video because I was just like, girl... I totally resonate with that. Um, so long story short, I was made fun of a lot um, when I was growing up. I was that girl, the chubby girl in school. I was um, the overdeveloped girl in school. Like, like I, I remember I mentioned in a previous video, I, um, I went through my first cycle um, in sixth grade. I grew boobies. I had big boobs in sixth grade. Um, in fifth grade, actually, I started growing my boobs. My boobs started growing in fifth grade. I had to start wearing a bra in fifth grade. Um, but sixth grade was when I had my period. Um, and so I was going through the change really early and a lot earlier than a lot of the other girls were. Um, so I was made fun of for that. I was made fun of for being heavy set. I was made, I was called names, um, that I'm not going to say because they, they trigger, they trigger me. Like when I hear them now, it triggers me. Um, <clears throat> and for the longest time, people wouldn't call me by my real name. They would call me by a nickname that just tormented me and it was one of the reasons why I chose not to continue on to middle school the same middle school that all of those elementary school kids were going to I told my mom I wanted to go to a different one because I wanted to ditch the name <laughs> I wanted to ditch the name um and so that's what I did and it was the best choice ever um so the teasing stopped in seventh and eighth grade that was middle school and then when I went into high school was like a whole nother ball game <laughs> <laughs> and I was always teased like I was teased in middle school I was teased in high school um like people would just te they would just be mean you know because I was nerdy I was nerdy I was like an outcast like I just didn't fit in I fit in with like the other outcasts but I was just like not part of the popular group um and and then like it just you know it was just it was just how I am and so I feel like and I was much smaller in high school than I am now. I am the largest I've ever been. This is the largest I've ever been and, and hopefully the largest I will ever be. <laughs> um, but I have always been made fun of, always growing up and always just criticized. Not made fun of by family, but criticized by family. Um, so my parents you know, would criticize my choices in belief. My parents would criticize my lack of belief. So I was always criticized on my faith. I was criticized in school about my size. I was criticized about every this and that. I just always feel like growing up, I've always had someone in my ear about what I'm not doing right or what I should be doing. And so having Chiron in the first house, the house of self, makes sense. 
Um, and so let's bring it back to what we were originally talking about. So with the judgment and that nine of nine of wands, um, to me, nine of wands is saying, even though I've had a huge past of a lot of bullshit, I'm still standing up and, and facing it, right? I'm dealing with it. And so I have been positively trying to change that whole experience um, for the better. And that's part of Chiron. Like that's part of the lessons of Chiron is like, utilizing your your weaknesses and the things that you struggled with hey 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 hey, you are eating mommy's tarot card and that is not okay stop oh my god you are so bad she just chewed up my tarot card <gasps> what bad cat luna never did that anyways um, that was my fault though, because I let it sit on the floor. <laughs> um, so part of Chiron's lessons are you're supposed to, well not supposed to, but if you want to heal from your, you know, your lessons and your 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 wounds, you gotta turn it around. And so <clears throat> it's kind of funny, like when I think about it, I am at the largest I've ever been, but I am also the most confident I've ever been. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> Like, how does that work? Um, <laughs> I'm also old, you know, I'm, well, I'm the oldest I've ever been, like, obviously. <laughs> but I'm in my 30s. I'm in my early 30s. I'm a plus size woman, but I'm so happy. I'm happy with myself. I love myself more than I've loved myself at any other size. Now, I'm not saying that, <laughs> I'm not saying that I got to be, like, heavy set, plus size, you know, overweight, to be happy, absolutely not. Because I'm sure that if I was like half my size, I'd probably be happy too. Um, at least I would like to think I would be. But the reality is, is that I am the size that I am. And yes, it's changeable and I can change that. But in the meantime, I still have to love myself, you know? And so that's been the lesson that I've been learning. And <laughs> it's really helping me because one, um, I can't tell you how many times I come across people in my life who struggle with their own body images. Um, a lot of times it's plus size stuff. Or I can't tell you how many times I have a client who just needs a pep talk. And I feel like my readings do that for people. And so I feel like that's one way that my Chiron is doing a positive. Um, my experiences growing up in all of those, those hard times has helped me be there for my clients in a different way. Um, but I also feel like body positivity plus size positivity is so important. <laughs> I think people who put down people who are plus size because they are unhealthy or they're killing themselves. I think that's that is so rude. Um, I think that, yeah, there's a point where if you are physically not comfortable and if you are physically having symptoms of possible illnesses or physical illnesses, things that you can't do anymore that you wish you could, then okay, then that's grounds for like, do something about it, you know, take care of yourself. Um, but there's a fine line with that. And like people who are just plus size, but they're happy, they're content, they're healthy. And just because you're plus size and or overweight doesn't mean that you're not healthy. Um, there's so many people who go out and get tested have blood tests and stuff and we yeah our numbers might be a little bit elevated here and there but we're not unhealthy <laughs> so I just think that it's like it's it's hurtful it's hurtful and so when I see that in people's comments like I'm one of those people where I like to give them love you know um I follow a lot of high profile plus size women um I absolutely adore you know and um like the other day Tess Tess Holiday is one of those plus size um, high profile women that I follow and um, and she posted pictures of some of these nasty comments that she receives from people telling her that she's gonna die and that you know hope you don't lose a limb you know due to diabetes and it's just the rudest shit that people put in her inbox um, and so I knew that she was not, I knew she wouldn't respond to my, to my DM or anything, but I was like, I know she'll probably read it. If she's reading all of this other bullshit, I was like, she's probably good. She'll probably read mine. Um, and so I, I put a little DM in her, in her thing, um, to shed some love <laughs> because I'm like, this poor woman needs, needs some love, you know? Um, 
Because what, 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 I know like back in the day when I had a Tumblr account and I would like, I would have, you know, you know, you can get like little private messages. So I would be all excited. Ooh, I have like some private messages. And then when I would open it up, it would just be like anonymous bullshit, you know, people just being little trolls. And I remember how hurtful that felt, you know, and it was such an ugly feeling <laughs> to like open my own inbox and have hate. And so I was like, this poor woman, she's, she probably gets this on a daily basis, like multiple times from just people who have nothing better to do with their lives. And um, so I was like, I wanna spread some love. So I sent her like a couple sentences of just positivity and love and just wishing her, you know, wishing her well and just telling her how beautiful she is and how, how much she's inspired me just by watching her, her posts and living her life and just like enjoying herself regardless of her size, you know? And so <laughs> I don't know if she read it. I'm sure she did, but you know, I wasn't expecting anything out of it. I just wanted to be a positive light in her inbox with a sea of probably bullshit, you know? And so um, that's that was what was coming up to the surface for me last night when I was watching Hannah's Chiron video. And then also when I was thinking about my own anxiety over my husband's graduation, because my self criticism is coming creeping in. Um, I'm worrying about what are other people going to think when they see that my husband has a plus size wife. That's probably the biggest, the biggest fear I have. And as silly as it sounds, because it's again, it's like, it's me worrying about what other people are thinking about me, even though it doesn't really matter because I'm never going to see these people ever again. Um, but that's, that's the thing, you know, and I even like verbalized it to my husband. I was like, I don't want to embarrass you or I'm, I don't want you to feel ashamed of having a plus size wife. You know, I'm like, I'm sorry. And he's like, <laughs> he goes, I don't give a fuck what people say. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. He was like, babe, I don't give a fuck what people say. Fuck them. Who cares? We're, one, we're never going to see them again. He goes, and two, it's you're my wife and I think you're beautiful and that's all that matters. And so it was just, <laughs> it was the sweetest thing. But it was also like, okay. So, <laughs> so it was just really sweet. I don't want to cry. I don't want to cry. I don't want to cry. Um... So anyways, those are like things that I worry about, you guys. Like I worry about being um, being, <laughs> being on someone's radar and someone thinking something negative about me. And although like I can't control what other people think because everyone can think what they want, um, I just don't want to hear it or I don't want to be like subjected to it, you know? And so, <laughs> and so I am nervous. I am nervous to go to, to his graduation for that. And I am nervous for like these guys having beautiful skinny girlfriends and skinny wives and then it's like I'm the plus size one and am I going to be the only one and it's I know that that's like ridiculously thinking because we're in a world of like so many shapes and sizes <laughs> but that's just where my mind is and so um I guess like that nine of cups kind of portrays yeah like right now emotionally I feel good, but I think that nine of cups is bringing up some stuff that I was thinking and feeling last night and stuff I've been thinking and feeling about his graduation and I am a little bit nervous about it. So let's pull one more card to end this video, this video diary. I don't want to drop it on the floor. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, the moon. Was there another one? I don't think so. I thought another one flipped over. Okay. I love that. <laughs> so the moon coming up to me um, is fears. The moon is fears. The moon's, but the moon is also illusions. Um, and so to me, illusions is like, I may think of myself as a certain way, or it's like, I might have like this, this, how do I say it? Like this, altered state of 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 seeing the situation for like okay you know like how, how people have body dysmorphia like that only with the situation so I feel like the moon is kind of saying like you are thinking too much into it <laughs> like you're focusing only on your setbacks or your your flaws and you're allowing your flaws to be enhanced but a lot of other people are going to be there to cheer on their significant others. They're not going to be focusing on your size. 
So, <laughs> and it could be just like a fleeting moment. Like it could be like when my husband introduces me to some of his academy mates and then they meet me, the, their first initial thought might be, oh, she's a plus size girl. That might be like one thought, but it's not gonna be something that they're gonna sit and dwell on for the whole day. Like I'm just stupid for thinking that. <laughs> But that's just where my mind is. Um, and so I love it. And then I also suggest, I always think of Cackling Moon when I pull the moon card. Um, so yeah, but <laughs> guys, I am nervous though. So, oh, and the card at the bottom of the deck is the strings. So it's just kind of like the card is like saying, get it together, Rose. Like you're, you hang in there. You're a boss ass bitch and you can handle this. <laughs> Okay, you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. I need to put the videos together since there's like three of them. And then um, post this for you guys and then I'm gonna head out because like I said, it's Sushi Wednesday at Sprouts and I wanna go to the crystal shop. So I will talk to you guys later. Love you guys, bye.